we don't want to be partners with Hollywood. We don't want to be respected or esteemed in Hollywood. We really want to bring them down. Hi, I'm Evelyn Ray. Welcome to The Cauldron Pool Show. Today, I am joined with a very special guest. Uh, Certainly, I think one of the most important interviews you'll hear uh, that I've done thus far because this is something super important for our future. I'm joined with the CEO of Law TV, which is a new sort of subscription type service, an alternative to say Netflix, uh, an alternative to like Disney or Stan and all these things. The CEO is Marcus Pittman and I'm super excited to have you here. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. As I mentioned, I think this is like really important because as we're seeing today, um, especially as Christians, you just can't watch any TV show or any any program that comes your way. And it, it goes so far to say that pretty much anything I would say made from the 2000 onward, you pretty much have to really vet, especially for your children. Um, and it, it makes it really difficult for entertaining. Now you've created uh, a new alternative to this problem. And I'd love for you, I'm not going to try and butcher it, but I'd love for you to have the opportunity to explain what Law TV actually is for those viewers at home who are curious. Yeah. So the easiest way to describe it is it's a, a blend of Kickstarter plus Netflix together. And so the way it works is that you, well, let's go, let's talk about how the way Hollywood works first. Because the way Hollywood works is if you have a Netflix or a Disney subscription, you pay a monthly fee and then that monthly fee is uh, div divvied up or a part of your monthly subscription is pulled into a pool in which some Hollywood executive elite sort of determines what they want to uh, do with your money in terms of buying content, movies and TV shows and films and stuff like that. And so what we're saying is instead of taking that money that's used for films and TV shows that you don't want to see, um, that's determined by 11 people in all the world, why don't we just let the monthly subscribers who are paying for this service fund the movies and TV shows that they want to see before they're made? <laughs> and and that, that way um, they have sort of control over their money and how it's used and what they're watching. Um, and so that's sort of what it is. Uh, you, you subscribe uh, every month and a portion of your monthly subscription is used to fund movies and TV shows that you want. Um, we have sort of like an in-game currency. Called, we're called, we call it loot. Uh, it's in-game currency pretty much. And you're based on your monthly subscription, you'll get uh, – a sort of certain allotment of loot every week that you can spend funding movies and TV shows and um, episodes of television. And when there, some shows are, um, will stream as soon as it hits hundred percent on the funding goal and others uh, will start production as soon as it hits hundred percent on the funding goal. So that's uh, that's sort of the two models and that's how, how, how it works right now. I think it's amazing because so often I see Hollywood producing films and I go, why would you do this? No one is interested in this film. Um, for example, the Ghostbusters. Let's just have a look at that for a minute. That was something iconic like from my childhood. I feel very nostalgic about it. And then they remade it and absolutely butchered it to the point where I do not want to watch it. Yet, you know, as you mentioned, like when you subscribe to Disney and all these things, it's like you just basically a given what you get and tough luck, bad luck, you subscribe, we're going to provide the entertainment. And if you don't like it, well, you know, that that's all that's available to you. So what I really loved about Law TV, and for those listening, it's spelt L-O-O-R. That's how you spell Law TV. What I loved about it, and I'm actually part of Law TV already, is that I get this loot every week and I get to decide as the viewer, as the person who's wanting to be entertained, where I actually put that money. And I get really excited when I see the loot building up and it's nearly 100% because I go, yes, that means a new episode is going to be coming out. And as a as someone paying for that subscription, I feel like I'm getting my money's worth because, you know, as I said, that's where I'm doing it. And what I love is the initiative that this is and where I can see this going, particularly for families, particularly with people who have children, particularly for Christians, who actually want to take care of the things that they're viewing with their eyes and they're listening with their ears. Um, 
So I really love Law TV. I love what it stands for. What I want to know is how did you come up with this and how long have you been working on this idea for? Yeah. So uh, over two years now, I would say is is kind of, well, probably maybe actually almost almost two years now is when we first started thinking about it in terms of and I, the idea came about. Uh, but it happened because I was uh, I actually made two documentaries um, on abortion called Babies Are Murdered Here and Babies Are Still Murdered Here. And we put Babies Are Still Murdered Here up on Amazon Prime and then Amazon Prime deleted it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I realized, okay, we need a solution to be able to film and stream movies um, that uh, that won't go anywhere else. Uh, uh, so, you know, in, in America, we have, you know, Pure Flix, which is just sort of a cheesy Christian, Christian entertainment company that's kind of hallmark nonsense films um and uh just really cheesy almost like romantic comedies <laughs> that you get on like lifetime you know channel for during christmas like those sort of things i don't know if you have the, that in america in, in australia but no, in america we, we have this one called lifetime and hallmark and they're super cheesy romantic rom-com movies they're super cheap and they know that they're cheap like, like the companies that make it are aware that they're cheap but Pure Flix does the same thing with Christian movies and they're not self-aware. <laughs> so it's not right. really, uh, uh, it's, it's just not good. And they've been doing that for years, trying to market and cater towards women as their primary audience uh, in the Christian film industry. Um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, well, now that they're streaming, um, men make a lot of those content decisions and, and Christians uh, should have you know, fathers and sons should have movies that they watch that maybe the wife and the daughter don't like. <laughs> like, it's okay. like that's okay. You know, if you go into Christian bookstore, you have, you know, you have your, uh, your women's section, you have your men's section, your single, single section, your married section, right? So Christian bookstores are categorized by who is watching them. But with Christian films, it was never that way. It was always, we're making movies for 35 year old women and above. No offense to women. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it just creates one sort of story that's being told over and over and over and over again um, when you have the same demographic that you're going after over and over and over again. And so we wanted to do something different and with the understanding that really that um, uh, Christians or conservatives really can make whatever story they want. They, they can tell whatever story they need, they, they need to, and they shouldn't be defined into a cheesy genre, uh, Christian books or genre basically. Um, mm. and so that's sort of, that's, that's what we want to do. We want to open it up. And, um, like you said, the platform is a lot of fun. Um, especially when a show gets to like 95% to a hundred and the internet starts going kind of nuts and, you know, <laughs> people are like putting microwave in the pop popcorn in the microwave and, you know, it seems <clears throat> fun first, the, you know, <laughs> will the popcorn finish first or will the episode be funded in time? Um, so it's been really cool to watch. Um, and uh, it, as our subscriber base grows, as our model grows, um, and as we're able to actually fund content, you know, every week that's that rivals that of Netflix and Disney based on our subscriber count, um, we're really going to be able to change the world because we're not going to be afraid to tell stories. We're not going to do diversity standards, nonsense, you know, we're not going to cast LGBT or, uh, you know, a, a certain race just to make sure that we meet quota. We're just going to let the artists and the filmmakers tell the story that they want without any of those restrictions from executives or notes being passed down. And I think when you give artists the freedom to do what they want, they're going to make better stories. And in turn, that'll make a more profitable company. So, Absolutely. And, you know, I think people are who are even quiet on the issues at hand, people who are quite apathetic, people who are quite, um, you know, they don't want to ruffle feathers. They desperately want good entertainment again as well. I mean, you only have to look at the ratings of movies and things decline for these apparent big box office films to see that there is a desperate void. There is a void, a lacking of good entertainment. And I I love what you just said then, how if you give artists, creators, you give people the uh, creative license to do what they actually want to do to produce quality over quota, we're going to have a better product in the end. And I think that goes for Christians and non-Christians for everyone. I think we just want things that we can relate 
relate to as human beings. And the things that we're being presented to are such a small minority that none of us who can watch, who watch it can relate to the protagonists of these stories. And when you have that distance between the protagonist and the viewer, you don't get into the stories as much. You don't enjoy them as much. Um, I will say this though, we don't have Hallmark and we don't have those other sorts of um, Christian sort of alternative shows in Australia, but I do like a good Hallmark film and I'm under the age of 35. Um, but that's yeah, just... The Hallmark film, but, but yeah. you know it's a Hallmark film. <laughs> exactly. And you, have, you have other options as, as well, right? So that's yeah. sort of the but and it's interesting i think i like it because there's nothing else if if that makes sense as well i'm like well this is trash this is trash that's light and easy there's no propaganda well that i've seen so far i'd rather watch this b-grade type quality thing than subject myself to the agenda and the and just the wokeness in all these other things so i enjoy it for light-hearted viewing and, and that sort of purpose but again I am desperate and stuff for good entertainment that I as a human being would enjoy. So this is really exciting. Um, and, and I think it's actually it could be really big. I think for a really long time, we've been criticizing and almost putting on display the negative sides of the entertaining industry, which is necessary in order to raise awareness and things. But all alternatively at the same time we have to have solutions and this is why i love law tv this is a solution like you mentioned you did those documentaries on abortion and they were taken down from amazon look at the parlor app do you remember when that was taken down from amazon and all the big drama that happened with parlor because they didn't like the censorship every alternative that we come up with is just not good enough because there's still the ability for censorship there's still the ability for these other godlike figures who can try and control what we do so law tv is void of all of that which is fantastic um but i want to hear uh, a little bit about your understanding of the hollywood industry um and a lot of the sort of agendas and poor ideologies that you you're obviously in the spectrum like that you've seen sort of infiltrate that and and the negative effect you think it's had on creativity yeah so um one of the things that Marxists do really well is they use money to seize power. Um, so whereas whereas conservatives are more likely to use money to make more money and sort of store that money um, or pass it down to their kids or whatever. But Marxists have a real specific goal and that they understand that I can seize a cultural institution with money. And with that cultural institution, I can change people's hearts and minds. So what's happened with Hollywood specifically is that it's been taken over by the Marxist left, the the um, the LGBT agenda, all those sort of things. And uh, that has caused uh, all the stories really, I mean, the liberals and the Marxists, they really don't have any original stories that they have. Um, they're, they're, that's why you see there's a lot of rehash and remake and mm. you know there's the female version of ghostbusters <laughs> right? like that sort of stuff like you see that stuff because they don't know how they don't understand what makes a good story uh because everything within them that says uh this makes a good story is also uh inherently christian and so because they're warring it against themselves on that they they just it's easier for them just to go well, let's just rehash the 80s movies because uh, that's a e mm. it's easy money you don't have to take any risk um and uh you know people want to see an, a sequel to whatever movie right um so so but that's really what we've seen this is this is why um uh elon musk buying twitter is such a shock to the system because it was the first time someone who is not a marxist per se um or not a liberal um, per se, at least of course, at least in their eyes, he's not a liberal. Um, he's actually buying Twitter and taking away what they call a communication system, um, which is an interesting way to describe Twitter because <laughs> mm. it used to be social media, but now it's a means of communication that was seized from them. Is how they, that's how they put it here in America. And so it's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the first time we saw the reverse happen and uh, it should be happening way more. You know, it'd be amazing if Laura got big and 
we could seize Disney from the Marxists, you know, steal some <laughs> and, and really take over and put in a bid for Disney. It'd be amazing. That, that's what should be happening. Um, but we don't tend to think those in those terms in, in terms of how do we grow big businesses and use the money and capital from those businesses to take back uh, the institutions that have been stolen from us. And, uh, and, and that's sort of, that's sort of what I hope to do with Laura. I hope we get too incredibly successful and that we make a ton of money and then we can buy Disney back <laughs> <laughs> from uh, the crazy people that, that are running it right now. That'd be amazing and dream come true, but it starts with building small things. It starts with having a vision um, and a path forward um, um, and, and saying, you know, here's the small steps that's going to get us to, that point right so here's here's the tiny little increments that we can take to get to uh this financial goal right so yeah mm. yeah it's really exciting and and wouldn't it be amazing if we could do an elon musk on the entertaining industry i mean elon musk it's funny he put a meme out after he sort of put in a bid for twitter saying that you know how far the left is gone that he's no longer left and you know 10 years ago i think the meme was he was very centrist he wasn't really left he wasn't really life right he was sort of just a little bit center of left and he the memes shows how far people have moved from that point that now he's there and he's being labeled as like a far-right extremist when really the ideologies have just gotten so degenerate and so regressive, it makes him look like that. And I just think, wow, what would they think of me? Because um, I'm probably even further along than Elon in terms of what I think. Um, I'm off the right hand cliff, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I know. Hanging by a rope, so. <laughs> yeah, but it would be amazing if we were able to have the opportunity to do this. And something I, um, yeah, a lot of people say it's 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 all well and good to point and to criticize, but you know you've got to have solutions. And this is one of those things. And a lot a lot of people say what the right handed side of politics are like. Uh, conservatism is we we lack artistic flair. You know, we're we're quite. I think people view us as very analytical and not as creative maybe but I think it's really wrong I think that there are so many incredibly creative people who are very aligned to our way of thinking but we just don't have that intuition or that vision or it's like we've almost given up on the entertaining industry altogether because it just seems like a big thing to tackle but I think if we just build like a, almost like a separate thing and build that up, give people an option. That's good. I think what I wanted to ask you next was about the quality of films, because a lot of people, um, I wouldn't say are disappointed, but one of the things that's sort of lacking from, I guess, what already exists in the Christian spectrum is good quality films that, that is on par with Hollywood. And one of the slogans that you sort of had uh, for Law TV was, um, Christian movies basically shouldn't be bad, and you wanted to provide an opportunity for good. That's not what it says? Can, can we say what it says? Go. You say. You say what it says. Go for it. It says Christian movies shouldn't suck. Yeah. Right. So that's that's sort of you know where where we we come down to because for 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 so long, and, and the reason we use that word, even though a lot of people don't like it, is because we believe the Bible shows us a lot of things that are vulgar and violent and, 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 and presented in a way that shows sin as real. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to use Christian film as a way to sort of water down sin, but we, mm. we also want to present, we want to present sin accurately in a way in which people don't sin in presenting it, right? So we we have rules like no nudity, right? No blasphemy. Those sort of things are pretty standard. But as far as you know, CGI special effects or you know CGI blood splattering, that's not real. And um and and those are sort of things that we want to show um in in terms of sin. And we give the artists the freedom to really be able to tell those stories. And if they cross the line, um, then our consumers who are spending money and funding their projects uh, just won't fund them again in the future, right? So there, there, there's, a, there's a sort of economic way of determining where the line is for our audience, uh, but it also in the same way gives our artists more freedom that they haven't had before. And so that's why we, we do that. And so we think 
if the consumer and we think that if the consumer has the freedom to pick the shows that they want and then the artist has the freedom to make those shows then they're going to make better content because the market is determining what is a good show who is who are the best storytellers um who are the best actors all those sort of things is determined consumer to creative and not with a hollywood executive uh sort of making those decisions based off of looking at algorithm or a data or spreadsheet, um, which mm. is how it's done mainly now. And so we just want to make the creative process as organic as possible um, and also as profitable as possible in the same way. Mm. Now, you mentioned that you have sort of rules and things if people want to do a movie or present a movie. Could you explain what the process is? Because if people are watching this and they go, I'm actually a filmmaker, I'd love to be a part of this. Like, is there a vetting process? Uh, what are the rules and how are they sort of, I guess, I don't like using the word enforced, but how are they kind of managed? Yeah, so uh, there is a vetting process in the sense of uh, whether or not you have a history of making content that is um, good. Um, and, and so, you know, do you have a record of making content? Do you, if we were to give you money, would we be guaranteed a product at the end of the day for the audience? If the audience were to give you money, you know, we don't want them just running away with them, with the money. Mm. So, so there is a vetting process in that sense. We're not a free speech platform in, in the sense of anybody can just go up there and pitch to any, right? Cause we want, we want to make sure that we're sort of letting people who aren't going to uh, take the money and run make the content. And we think that's really important. So that's sort of, that's our main standard is sort of, do you have a history of making content? And, um, and as far as the story is just, uh, is it a good story? Um, is it, is it, um, uh, is it, is it, creative is it unique um you know our chief content officer jason who vets everything says he knows it's a good pitch when he can't sit down after he hears it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i think there's something inherent in all of us uh, because we're all created in the image of god that we know what a good story is we know what um, a good idea is we know what good art is when we look at it um and you know art is not subjective like people have said it is or postmodern art has has claimed uh, a, a splatter of paint against a canvas is just a splatter of paint it's not necessarily art um and so we believe the bible defines those standards as whatever is good and true and beautiful and that's sort of what we look for in a pitch and um and yeah and, and for the most part it's it's very very lenient for for the creative uh he really uh can make what he wants but for the most part it's just like can the story be told? Our, our main thing is like, can the story be told anywhere else or does it have to be here on more or no one will hear it? And if it's that it has to be on more or no one will hear it, that's usually a good sign. Mm. Um, those stories we're looking for in which nobody else wants and no one else has the guts to tell. Mm. Yeah, I think it's important to remember, especially as Christians, that freedom isn't a libertarian idea where you just are free to do whatever you want. I think it's super important to remember that freedom is the freedom to obey God and to, to be free to um, obey his laws. And if anything hinders your ability to freely worship God and to freely obey his laws, that's obviously a hindrance to freedom, but freedom uh, is is not unfortunately what a lot of people make it out to be. Uh, freedom without virtue is utter chaos. Um, right. And you know, when when God speaks, when he, God gives us His laws, He turns the chaos into order. And I right. think it's important to remember that as Christians with entertaining and things like that, that we do have standards that freedom isn't freedom to watch pornography and nudity and listen to blasphemy and swearing. Uh, it's having the freedom is freedom to obey God through the entertaining industry. So I liked what you said, how it's not a free speech platform. And I'd love if you're happy to sort of elaborate a little bit further on that and where you guys sort of stand with those elements of freedom. Yeah. So we, one of the things we do is we tell our artists, uh, we take an, uh, I think it's either Athanasius or Augustine, but it's, he says, love God and do what you want. Right. And so the, the principle there 
is that if you love God, you're not going to do what you want. You're going to do what God wants and what you do will be what God wants. Right. So, you know, love God and do what you want. So we usually tell our artists to love God and make what they want. And we trust our artists. We trust our artists are not going to, um, you know, put, you know, nudity in their films or be offensively vulgar in their, in their, uh, in their, in their movies and TV shows. Uh, and, and it's better, I think, when you're working with people that you know are Christians or, you know, at least have a Christian worldview or want to make stuff uh, for the conservative audience that you just give them the freedom to make what they want. And if they have any questions, they would come to you with those Mm -hmm. questions. We can go from there, but ultimately we'd rather not give a list of no's, but we'd rather just give a list of uh, uh, just one, one primary objective is just to love God and make what you want. And, and, And we think when we do that, um, the artists will respect you enough uh, to not try to cross any lines for you because you're trying to help them. And so it's a, it's a sort of mutually uh, beneficial relationship. I think that is, uh, you know, partly helped by the mutually beneficial relationship in God's system of economics already that exists. Right. So, so mm-hmm. that's sort of, um, uh what we what we do and um we haven't had any issues with artists trying to push the lines or go crazy or do anything ridiculous or um anything like that and so uh i i don't think we will because i i think those people probably don't want to make stuff for us anyway so Mm. yeah no definitely and like i think obeying god's law is going into the earth and spreading the gospel and i guess the regeneration of the heart and the soul and these sort of things come naturally like you know as as you sort of said before when you love god you want to obey his laws you want to honor and up you want to be someone who bears good fruit and that will you know go and infiltrate into the way we represent and create entertainment and things so i think that's a great sort of um basis like what you mentioned i think it's a great way to sort of that's the bar and you know take it as it sort of comes now yeah, for people way, real quick another way to explain it is that we we're a grocery store and the grocery store has rules for what is sold on the shelves right so walmart for for example um you know you have to have your packaging a certain size it has to say certain things on the packaging or whatever whatever Uh, but it's ultimately the consumer that decides if they buy the product right so the consumer has the freedom to go into walmart and buy what they want and whether or not walmart reorders stuff is not going to be whether based on whether or not they followed the rules but based on whether or not the consumer buys it in the end right so our our premise is just we're a grocery store for films um and uh and uh and and that's what we want to give the consumer the freedom to be able to make the movies and TV shows that they uh, to be able to fund the movies and TV shows that they want and the artists, the freedom to make it. So, and mm. that's the best way to look at, I think what we're doing. Mm. And what stage are you up to with law TV? I mean, I, I'm part of law TV. I've, I've subscribed. I get my loot and I get that, but am I of the, right understanding that it's at sort of like the beta sort of stage it hasn't transitioned to fully functioning yeah so we just launched the beta a month ago and so we have uh we've in in a month we 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 had well in a month we've doubled the goal we would have we thought we'd have for the whole beta so we we actually met our goal for the beta in first two weeks it's insane our users amount of users um and so we're doing really well there. The beta is free and there's two projects to fund as an example, sort of just so we can sort of test the funding mechanisms, make sure no loot is lost or there's any bugs or anything like that. Um, and, and just sort of just get a general explanation, just sort of get a general feeling of whether or not people get it. And uh, we think overall people have gotten it really well, um, tremendously well, actually. Uh, people get it immediately. And uh, they're excited about it and they're passionate about it and they're passionate about funding the shows that they're into. Um, and, uh, and, and so the next step is to transition our free subscribers into paid memberships and then start actually funding movies and TV shows with real money. Um, 
and and growing and expanding um, the the technology and the development team that we have and whatnot. And a lot of that's just going to come with, uh, you know, we're about to do our Series A investment round. Um, so just, you know, I think all the problems we have now, it's actually a good sign because all the problems we have uh, can be solved by a capital. Um, and they're not problems that's inherent with the existence of the thing um mm. which is what you don't want you don't want people to log on there and go this is dumb and never come back um yeah. but we actually see quite the opposite uh most people are coming back every week they're funding their shows and uh and and it's 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 been really fantastic so i'm excited mm. about it and i think our next investment round is going to be big and uh if any of your listeners want to get in on it now is the time <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you that, like, how do people get involved now? I know that we're at the beta um, phase, but how do people get involved now and particularly how they can get involved um, when it transitions into the next phase? Yeah, so, well, there's three there's three categories. We're the general monthly subscribers, the people that have come on the platform and say, I'm willing to pay for this um, the, the, and be a regular consumer. The second one is the creators. Uh, the filmmakers, the artists who have a story to tell, or, you know, right now we're actually creating a database of, you know, conservative anti-vax artists and filmmakers and talented individuals uh, that we can sort of have a pool so that when a movie gets funded for production, the director can sort of look through our people to see if there's anybody uh, that meets what they need. And then uh, the third, of course, is, um, uh, the third third option is of course investment. Um, we're looking for accredited investors. Uh, we're we're looking for mission driven capital. Uh, we don't want money from Marxists. <laughs> we don't want money from people who are going to you know force our worldview uh, in a way that normally happens, unfortunately. <laughs> and so uh, that's sort of that's really what happens is once money get, comes along, um, you'll have a big venture bank come or a big venture capital firm come and they'll say, we're going to give you $50 million, but now you got to follow our rules, right? Now you got to follow um, what we say. Um, and that's not our plan at all. Our plan is we're just looking for mission driven capital, people who believe in our mission, believe in what we're doing and want to return on investment, but they don't necessarily want um they, they, they trust you to run the business, right? So that's sort of the the thing you want. You don't want the people that think they can run the business better than you and come in and start pushing all these other nonsense that doesn't line mm -hmm. up with the world mission of the people that started the company. That's usually what you see happen with a lot of companies and especially technology companies. Uh, once they reach a certain point in popularity, uh, they get wooed with money and then the organization is taken over and it's used as the cultural capital that the Marxists usually look for. So, you know, mm. um, so that's what we're trying to prevent. And we have systems in place to make sure that uh, that doesn't happen. Uh, but yeah, so investment is huge for us. Um, and we're, we're very thorough in who we let invest and we don't take money from anybody. So. Mm. So if I, I think I had to get an invitation to be part of this um I guess the initial sort of launch of it is other viewers who might be listening today able to be a part of that, or is it best to wait that no, sort of you, month period? A lot of people that have invites that they're trying to give out uh, mainly because they get more loot when someone accepts their invite. So what we've done is we've set up a group um, on Facebook. It's called Facebook, facebook.com slash. Oh, I don't oh, It's just, if you go to Facebook, uh, it's called lore founders, L O O R founders. And I'll give you a link to that you can put in the mm, show notes. Great. Yeah. Um, and then that way anybody can uh, go to the founders group and just ask for an invite and they're out there and they exist. They're not hard to get. They're completely free. You don't even have to put your credit card information in to join the platform. And what we'd really like to do is get a ton of people to join, uh, to join and just show how quickly we can fund a series, right? With and just that way we can present it and say, look how quickly we funded an entire series. Like, so the more people that join, the more loot you get, and the more we can spend and fund. And it's you don't have to pay anything, you don't put in a credit card. We're just really asking for people to uh, use the site, give us feedback. We have a Discord where you can put in suggestions and um, give us any bugs or errors or problems that happen to you so we can fix that because 
uh, once we start charging people, people aren't going to be as friendly about bugs. <laughs> and stuff. We want to get them worked out before we start charging. But yeah, so I'll give you a link to the Lore Founders Group, and that's the best way to get. Uh, um, that's the best way to get an invite, and uh, it'd be awesome to have a huge Australian audience. Um, mm. We're not locked out. We don't lock out based on you know country or territory. Um, any of our content. Um, so yeah, so you guys are all welcome. There's uh, I think three episodes of Dark Holler available that you can watch now. And there's two episodes of Teach All Nations, but the third episode is about to fund. I don't know when this is coming out, but that'll probably be funded by the time this podcast comes out. And if it's not, join that Lore Founders group and go in there and fund it already. Uh, but but yeah, so um, as soon as it hits 100%, it starts streaming immediately for everybody, whether you fund it or not. That's the other thing I don't think we mentioned. Um, if, if you just join the platform tomorrow, you don't have to go and fund everything you want to watch. Everything that's already funded exists for everybody. Uh, it's sort of like in a way we 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 said sort of like a biblical inheritance in a way. Whereas uh, you, the, the the people that come after you uh, inherit all this work that you've done. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all the all the subscribers this month fund projects that new subscribers next month won't have to fund and it's really cool because the that mm. means that uh, as the subscriber base grows month to month there'll be more and more content uh for the new ones and stuff like that so uh it's been really fun so get in there uh fund content get it going and ready and uh i'm excited to um to see to see you guys in the discord and, and tell me all mm. about it so yeah. Well, you've actually reminded me, I have some loot that I have to uh, give away that I, I need to do. So Fire every week, like mana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do that as soon as this podcast finishes. Um, Cause I'm up, I'm up, I'm really excited for episode three. Um, and yeah, it, it, they're actually really high quality uh, documentaries as well. Like the just the camera work and the videography, everything has been really like slick, very pristine. It's very good. So it's certainly things I want to sort of get behind. Now, I'm not sure if you know yet, but are you sort of able to give people a rough idea of pricings, like what you're thinking about for a membership and things like that, like ballpark sort of figures? We don't have a, we don't, we don't have a price set yet. There's going to be a few tests uh, that we'll see and maybe some surveys from the users that are uh, using the platform now. So we haven't solidified a price. Uh, so I don't have those numbers available. No, that's okay. I just thought I'd, I'd check, but I think a lot of us have got, you know, $10 on Netflix, $10 on Stan, $10 on Disney. So we're spending about, you know, $30 a month anyway. But Stan, is that an Australian one? You don't have Stan? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> us Bogans have got weird things. Um, so... <laughs> It's um it's similar to Netflix, yeah. So it it runs as um is exactly the same as Netflix. You subscribe and you get a whole database full of full okay. of um shows and things like that. I didn't know that you guys didn't know what that was. That's yeah, I figured I knew all the streaming services. So anytime someone mentions a new one, I'm like, huh, never heard that one. But I guess that's definitely Australian. So it yeah. might be a different name in America, though. Okay, so it's it all blue with white writing across it, um, Stan. But yeah, might be something to look into. Um, but yeah, are you looking, that's what I also wanted to ask you actually, are you looking, because at the moment if I want to um, use Law TV, I sort of go on my phone and then I mirror it to my TV because mm -hmm. at the moment I don't believe there's an app or anything, but are you looking at going into that sort of avenue with apps? In the future, there might be an app uh, that we uh, let people download from our website. Uh, but what we don't want to do is we don't want to go to the app store because mm. we, we, we don't want to give 30% of our income that could go to artists to Apple and Google Play. Right. And we don't want to have to follow their hate speech laws and all the other nonsense rules that they have because a lot of the shows and stuff we're going to make are going to be really offensive um, to them <laughs> mm. so we don't want to get kicked off um after paying them 30 percent of the any sort of financial transaction so it's a lot better to teach your audience early on how not to use them 
Uh, mm -hmm. That way the audience isn't dependent and the users and subscribers that you have uh, don't have to worry about get us getting kicked off the store and then you, they don't know how to find you again and stuff. So it's better to do the hard work early, I think, and then just teach your audience this is the way we're doing it and this is why we're doing it. And uh, uh, one of the things we found is that Chromecasting is difficult and not everybody can do it, especially like the older age groups. Um, and for us, that's fine. Uh, because we want to reach a younger generation with films and TV shows. And we wouldn't want like the older people coming in there and spending their loot on stuff that <laughs> the younger generation wouldn't want. So the harder it is to watch the, we think the the better it is because the younger, the young, younger generation gets it. If you've played a, if you've, I mean, Elden Ring is like the most popular video game in the world right now. And it's like the hardest game ever made. Right. So they get it. Mm. <laughs> they know how to do it. So that's yeah. sort of our model is like, let's, let's just make it um, the way we can. And then as we grow, we'll add uh, additional features and apps and stuff like that. But mm. for the most part right now, uh, there's no plan um, to do an app unless we strike a massive series A investment round. And then maybe we might push it forward a little faster. <laughs> mm. I had no idea that you had to pay 30% of things to for these apps. That's astounding. That's a really big number. Yeah, there was a big battle of that because Fortnite got tired of paying Apple 30% for all their stuff. And so then they like pulled Fortnite from the app store and it was like the most popular app. And then you had to go to their website to get it. And then uh, it became this big like court case in America, there's like Fortnite versus Apple. And um, uh, I, I'm not, I don't exactly remember the results, but I actually think Fortnite went one. Um, and it wasn't that Apple had to pay 30% or, uh, or, or, or Fortnite uh, refused to pay 30%. They just wanted additional payment options other than Apple pay. I think, and because through Apple, Pay, if you used Apple Pay, you did have to pay 30%, but also Apple wouldn't let any other payment system <laughs> be used um so it was just a mess and we i don't want to get into that i'd rather just say let's just give our artists as much money as possible mm. no <laughs> we'll that's great that well yeah i think we ha and this is the whole point of things we need to learn to be independent of these systems that are in place because the systems that are in place do not help us they give us they do us no favors yet we continually go back to the same thing the same thing just because of apathy because it's security it's 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 just easier just to do it but you're right we need to early on teach people to be independent of these things how to access it independently of these things so that you can enjoy things and utilize things to their fullest extent so i'm actually i'm glad to hear that that you guys are on board with that and that's something that you're very much aware of so uh very exciting but do you have any um insider sort of scoops on on tv series or anything that you are looking at at releasing apart from the two that are in the beta sort of um category man what what can we talk about i'm trying to think <laughs> well we we just announced american recon which is a reality reality tv show about a um an armed militia that guards the border from human traffickers and drugs um in mexico yeah. um so that's really interesting um it's not you know it's not a clean down version of like, let's say the United States border patrol, which I think national geographic has a, a border patrol TV show. This is not that this is a group of volunteers, private armed militia that on their free time, go out and defend the border. Um, and, you know, they've, they've found bodies um, right along the part where Biden stopped building the wall. There's like a, you know, it's just insane. Um, I don't even know what I'm supposed to say, but <laughs> but uh but yeah so just that um, we have two animated cartoons that are coming up um uh i we're announcing them in the next week so i can't i i can't say it but on our discord we did share a screenshot so i'll say w there is a show called busted bible stories uh that'll be coming out hopefully soon um and that is by one of the guys that 
like animated Ren and Stimpy. He animated um, Johnny. He was one of the directors, producers for Johnny Bravo and Powerpuff Girls and Cartoon Network and mm -hmm. um, just amazing line of work. And I won't go into any details as to his name because uh, we want to announce that um, later. So those are cartoons that are coming up. Uh, we have some um, movies that we signed contracts for, just good movies. So we have a, we have a zombie horror uh, I, comedy movie uh, from mm -hmm. Ireland. Uh, that's oh, really okay. about um, it's the, the basic premise of it is uh, that zombies are attacking uh, the neighbor, their, their community, but they don't believe it because they're just on their phones reading fake news all day. Um, <laughs> so, so really phenomenal. Uh, and it's won like every film festival award that it's been to. Uh, and of course you've had Laura Clausen on your show. Yes. Um, Laura Clausen is doing Exposed, which is a series of animated shorts about abortion done by mm -hmm. secret Disney and DreamWorks animators, right? Um, who uh, don't want to be named. So uh, that is going to be tremendous, that project. And Kevin Sorbo voices one of uh, the, the, the narrations in one of those short animated shorts. Just an absolutely mm -hmm. incredible masterpiece i think of art mm. those short films are and they'll never get an oscar <laughs> they'll never get an award uh but i i think it's probably one of the most some of the most powerful pieces of animation that's ever been made um and so it'll be interesting to sort of see how people respond to those um so a lot of stuff um th there's also um some sh we have some shows that you know american recon is for adults it's not really a kid show and then we'll have kids shows um, and then we'll have shows for little boys and the fathers and um, eventually we'll have shows for daughters and their moms. And um, we're not categorizing everything as everybody needs to sit on the couch and watch the same thing together um, like uh, the Christian films in America do. So there's a lot of really good content coming out. Mm -hmm. um, oh, well, we did shoot a... Um, a comedy pilot for uh, the PKs. Uh, the PKs is about a pastor who is trying to manage his uh, large family, but also manage his church. Uh, so it's a comedy about being a pastor's kid. Um, it's really, really funny, really good. Uh, Show Baraka was the star of that. Um, so it's just really, really phenomenal. Um, all the work that's gone into that pilot. And so hopefully we'll be able to start funding that soon as well. Mm. But yeah, just tons of stuff, movies and TV shows and cartoons. And um, there's no particular genre um, with us. We're trying to cover all the bases. Mm. It's super exciting. I was just hearing you talk about those shows and I'm like, oh, I want to watch that. I want to watch that. And now I'm like, where am I going to put my loot? I don't know which ones I want to, which ones I want to fund. They all sound so wonderful for so many different reasons. And I guess that's why I think Law TV will be so successful because it is based on viewer discretion. It is based on this capitalistic idea that what you like, you get to fund. Um, and so the trouble now will be, where am I going to put my loot? Um, but I did speak to Laura Clarkson about her animated series and my goodness does I feel like you're exactly right it won't win an Oscar but it will win a lot of loot I think it's going to win lots of loot yeah, that's for sure so. yeah so but no, I'm really excited for it coming out. Um, for people who want to get involved, please follow the links that Marcus just spoke about. I will add them in the description for this podcast as well. Um, and it is Law TV, L-O-O-R, um, if you're wondering about the spelling. But before we sort of wrap it up today, um, I wanted to sort of, uh, I guess, touch base with you about what your overall goal is as a Christian man, like wh where you want to see this go and where you want to finish. I know we said we'd like to eat Elon Musk, Disney and things like that. But what's your sort of, I guess, short term goal, what you want to achieve and where do you want to see this go also long term? Yeah, I think our, our short term term goal, of course, is really just to uh, finish out a series A and develop the platform. Uh, so it's really good. Um, and then uh, we want to be able to build out a bunch of content, the library of content for the monthly subscribers um, that can really enjoy uh, that they can really enjoy. And then um, so the short term term goal is to really get everything launched and start accepting paid subscribers soon. And then uh, I think long term, you know, we talk about buying Disney. I, like I don't like to me, that's not a joke. Um, I, I, our, we always say that the, the goal of lore really is to 
uh, to 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 sling the rock at the head of Hollywood um, mm. and bring it down. We're not really we don't want to be partners with Hollywood. We don't want to be respected or esteemed in Hollywood. We really want to bring them down. And I think if we disrupt their executive green light process, that's the best way to do it, because then you take away all their power, sort of the same way that um, Uber took the power out of the hands of the taxi cab industries mm. and the taxi cab lobbies. Um, so I think we have the weight, we have a, the ability to do that. And I think we are going to do that. Um, but so it wasn't a joke about buying Disney. That would be a long-term plan. But I, I, I also would just like, ultimately, at the end of the day, I would like to see Lore just be a global Christian brand in the same way that Hobby Lobby or Chick-fil-A is. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess you don't have those in Australia, but... Um, but I know in, in them, America, though. Yeah, you know them. Yeah, so Chick-fil-A mm. is... A, a Christian, a big Christian multi-billion dollar brand and Hobby Lobby is the same way. And I think that's sort of, that's what we want to do. We want to become a, a Christian brand that doesn't cave to the culture. Cause I think, you know, it'd be really amazing to have some sort of uh, Christian film or movie uh, brand like lore that takes jabs at liberalism and Marxism and, and the enemies of, of the faith um, in a big way. Um, you know, like if, uh, uh, I mean, just, you know, like, for example, we're having a big conversation about Roe v. Wade right now in America. Like right now mm-hmm. would be amazing. What if Netflix, a company the size of Netflix, put out a movie talking about how awful abortion was right now? Like yeah. the think about the just shockwave that would send through the system. They would never do it, but we would. Right. And so uh, the bigger the platform is, uh, the more weight that our movies and TV shows have. Um, so that's sort of that's sort of the goal. Right. Mm, Use that would money be for amazing. Power, but not our power, but for the advancement of the kingdom, uh, that sort of power. Like that's something that we don't really see a lot of people doing. So mm. it's amazing. And it's something that we need to do. It's something that we desperately need um you know we, we keep we're on this trajectory and it seems like you know it's really hard to jump off the train but yeah you're right we need to jump off we need to invest and be a part of an alternative system something a big thing like law tv like as you said imagine right now with roe v wade if we could and it was a big platform put out a video to show the other side, to show the truthful side and to advance Christ's kingdom here on earth, because ultimately that's 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 the only way um, to go forward, to obey God's law by going and spreading the gospel and spreading his kingdom. So I'm really excited for Law TV. I, I, I genuinely am. I, th- I hope and I pray that it's a real success, not just for you as an individual, but uh, it's it's another thing that we can do, as you said, to advance the kingdom here on earth. And I hope people go and support uh, it and get a part of and become a part of it. Um, and I'm really grateful that you could um, etch some time in your day with me to um, talk it through. Yeah, thank you for having me. Also, in the future, we'll, we'll be happy to send you as many artists and filmmakers to be on your show and talk about their projects as you want. So, that would be incredible. Absolutely amazing. I would appreciate that. I actually um, interviewed Nathan Anderson. Oh, yeah. From Donations. Yeah, and he's he uses Law TV. So we spoke about that about his documentary series with you guys last night, and it was such a joy. It was it was a real privilege, as it is today, to be able to speak to you and to connect with other Christians in this context that we're all like minded on the same journey. It's really encouraging, and I'm encouraged by what you're doing. I'm grateful for what you're doing, and I will be praying for you and for um, everyone over at Law TV um, in the future. So thanks again for for coming on, Marcus. Thank you for having me.